everyone, it is Phil Eichinger, and I am thrilled that you are joining me here. Um, I, uh, I wanted to catch up a little bit today on questions. I'm falling behind on a lot of them, and so I figured we'd knock a couple out, and we'll get right uh, to it. First one's on anxiety, and the question is, um, obviously outside of medication, um, what is your go-to, number one go-to for success uh, in treating and overcoming your anxiety? It's a great question, and, and the, the, the answer I'll give you really is, you know, there, there was short-term, like, life rafts that I pulled um, to help me when I was having a panic attack or, or bad anxiety. And then there was long-term solutions. So I'll talk to the long-term solutions. I have another video uh, on the channel, uh, Four Steps to Overcoming um, Anxiety. And you know, two of the best things for me whenever I would get in a pinch or trouble was breathing, obviously four by four breathing, uh, in the nose, out the mouth. Breathing is always accessible to you no matter where you're at. Uh, doesn't cost anything and you just have to uh, be able to access it and, 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 and feel it. Uh, the other thing is uh, my 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 exercise. Um, I don't want to explain a lot of it now, but obviously smell, taste, hear, feel, touch. Um, that uh, really helped me uh, as well. Um, but for actually overcoming my anxiety, uh, and I wouldn't say I've overcome it, I, I'd say it's, it's reduced significantly and it's very manageable now and that's something I never thought I would say being a chronic sufferer since I was 18 years old till, till you know, a few years ago. Um, even getting sober 16, June 4th will be 16 years. Um, even sober, um, my anxiety um, and because of it, depression continued to be um, uncontrollable. Uh, even though I was feeling so much better um, working a program and, and, and being free from, from alcohol. Um, so, uh, you know, but the, the answer to the question simply is uh, present moment living is what saved me. And what you need to understand is present moment living is just like it says, it's staying in the present moment. In the present moment here at this desk talking to you, I'm safe. Um, there's nothing that can really happen to me or get me um, as long as I'm here and aware of my surroundings, I'm okay. Uh, depression is based on the past and regret and what could have done or should have been done, relationships, friends, uh, 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 decision making, uh, children, um, but that's gone. Um, but when you suffer from anxiety and the imbalance uh, in the brain of, of depression, um, you have intrusive thoughts and you have negative thoughts. Um, you don't have a lot of positive thoughts um, and you get upset about that. And so staying out of the past, for the most part, um, is how you're going to quell the, the, the negative thinking, the intrusive thoughts and the depression and not projecting or futuring as I call it, um, the future will take away your anxiety. Depression comes from the past, regret, mistakes. Anxiety comes from the future, what could go wrong? And our brains are screwed up. We just, it's how we think, you know, we're, we're our own worst critic. I mean, my God, if we lose the car keys, we'll beat ourselves up for three months about what terrible people we are uh, and uh, why this only happens to us and, and why are we cursed and we're awful. And I mean, it's just, it's just incredible what we'll do. Um, but if we're given compliments or told great things, we barely even hear them. If we're told a hundred great things, um, we will, uh, pick out the one thing that wasn't a compliment and we'll focus on that for the next 17 years. Um, and if we can't th think about it for the next 17 years at the moment, we'll obviously wait till we try to go to sleep and we'll be tossing and turning at two in the morning and every mistake we've made, past, future, present, for the last 40 years will come up. Um, and people that don't have our DNA and don't suffer from what we suffer don't, would never understand what I just said, um, but I know this group does. So. Um, the depression from the past, regret, uh, 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 wanting to change it, um, not letting it go, not dealing with it, not running through the pain as opposed to around it. 
anxiety projecting on what could go wrong and what we find a year from now all the things we're worried about today 99% of them didn't even go right or wrong they were inconsequential and never even came into play but god damn did we take years off our life worrying about it in the present you know in, in, in the future so um, you want to stay present how do I stay present uh, it's all about constantly reminding yourself where you're at um, there's a Diet Coke bottle here. It is, uh, there's half full, it's got a red label on it, and the diet is actually scripted in cursive, Catholic school, but the Coke is written out. Now, if I wasn't in the present moment, and this is the practice piece of it, I would just glance and see a, an outline of a bottle. Um, I see this cup. Uh, it's just not a cup, it's a brown cup um, with designs on it. Uh, when I take a shower now, I don't just stand there, I feel the hot water hit my body and the places that it hits and how it feels on my muscles, uh, on my body. Um, when, I, when I use the soap, I, I smell the soap. Uh, I become aware of the fragrance. Um, you know, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm uh, at, a, at a red light, at a traffic stop, um, I'll look around, I'll see the inside of my car, I'll see the radio station, I'll change it. I'll see the deep red color of the red light and when it turns green, I'll see the green, I'll see the people, I'll see the clouds, I'll see the sky. Um, what this does, folks, is this gets you zoop, right back from past, regret, depressed, future, project, uh, anxiety, and gets your brain to literally begin to rewire, which is known as neuroplasticity. You can Google it, I'm a big fan of it. They used to think that your brain was hardwired. So if you had childhood trauma, if you had sexual abuse, if you had uh, alcoholism, uh, a dysfunctional family, yelling, screaming, arguing, things that really effed up your central nervous system, we used to think that like a football helmet, it hardwired and that's what you were stuck with. We now know that the brain is more mushy, more flexible, more rubbery, and you can actually rewire these neuron transmitters and actually change it, change the outcome, change your thinking, and change your whole outlook on life. So, present moment living. Now, here's where people make the mistake. I thought I was going to be able to do this within six months or three months. And what I realized was, it took me 35 years to want to handle my anxiety. It's not going to take 35 minutes to get rid of it and unwind it. So folks, especially with the brain damage and changes that have been made because of the medications. So, um, and by the way, big fan of medication, especially antidepressants for people that, that they work for. Um, I, I, I am not a doctor. I don't give medical advice. All I can do is tell you what happened to me and what worked and didn't work for me. And obviously those things pooped out on me relatively quickly and didn't work. Uh, and then I had withdrawal issues. So um, for those folks that that stuff works for, God bless you. And I'm so glad you get relief. Uh, it's just for me, it was a roulette wheel of trying things over and over again and mixing into heavier stuff and benzodiazepines and anxiety pills and, uh, and, and, and a whole bunch of stuff. Um, that didn't work. So, so that's, that's, that's beside the point. The point I want to make is it really took me a good two years to begin to feel my brain rewiring itself and really, you know, zzz, using the, the, the blowtorch and the wiring um, to, to, to fix it. And uh, so you have to keep at this. And look, it costs you nothing. It's not a big deal. Just make sure that you remember that whenever you begin to get anxious or whenever you begin to think negatively, that you zap yourself in, you look around, and you take an inventory of everything. What it is, what it looks like, what it means, what the colors are, what the shower feels like, what walking up the stairs feels like on the back of my legs, what the soap smells like, what a traffic stop smells like, lo smells like, is like looking around, seeing people, cloud, sky, etc. And over time, your brain is going to begin to stay in the present moment without it becomes habit without the habitual reminding of yourself that that's what you have to do. Um, how did I do it and stay on it? I took little index cards and put them everywhere. 
in my apartment in the morning over my toilet if I get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and started thinking, um, which would keep me from falling back to sleep, I had a pee over my toilet, taped to the wall, present. Get back to the moment, look around, look at the white bowl, uh, look at the shower, look at the carpeting. Um, on my mirror in the morning when I would shave and brush my teeth, pee, look at it. Don't start thinking about your day, worrying about this meeting, worrying about this business deal. Stay in the moment, look at the mirror, look at the sink, feel the water on your hands. Doesn't that feel great, right? And then over time, in my car, covering my radio, pee. Every time that I looked at it, it would remind me when I get to a stoplight, Check in, check in with myself, look at the colors, see the world, see the people, make observations, stay present. And I'll tell you what, um, there's a lot of good things you can do for anxiety. Um, living life in a present moment scenario um, was a game changer for me. So um, number one, present moment living for anxiety, long-term relief, no meds. Um, again, if you need meds, that's your business. For me, they didn't work and they actually trapped me, um, but present moment living certainly helped. Um, so that's, uh, that's good on that one. When I first started to um, get into withdrawal and recovery from Tramadol, Ativan, and um, uh, uh, Ambien, um, I um, was a, a keyboard warrior. Um, which was disastrous, again, because of our DNA and our worrisome, intrusive, negative thoughts, I thought I was dying of 17,000 different diseases. So the internet was not a good thing for me, right, folks? I mean, you know what I'm talking about. We're nuts uh, in a very good way. And by the way, we're not nuts. Someone explained to me early on that our awareness is so beautiful that when our soul and our physical bodies and reactions aren't matching up, we want to get better and we want to fix it. Crazy people don't know they're crazy. Um, it takes an unbelievable awareness to try to recover and get better. So um, you're not nuts. Um, but I got into a whole bunch of stuff that I was reading on the internet. Um, the, you know, the biggest thing was supplements. Um, vitamins uh, and um, amino acids. I mean, tryptophan, 5-HTP, tyrosone, uh, I mean, a a a ashwagandha, I mean, you name it, I, I was on all of it. Magnesium, and I I'll tell you, uh, it, it crushed me. Um, from what I now understand is, especially with my GABA receptor drugs, uh, Ambien and Ativan, um, all I was doing was antagonizing the, 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 the neurons uh, uh, trying to, to regrow themselves and irritating the shit out of them. Um, it sounded good that these are natural ways to build back up your GABA, um, but you know one of the biggest parts of recovering is, and this is tough for people to hear, but it is what it is, time, T-I-M-E, things I must earn. Um, and so uh, uh, I got off all that stuff and I got some relief there. So that didn't work for me. What did work for me was changing my diet um, in terms of drinks, to answer his question on drinks. Uh, every morning, a uh, smoothie uh, of uh, bananas um, because restless leg syndrome is probably the worst. Restless leg syndrome and insomnia are the two worst things when you are suffering from anxiety or recovering from an anxiety medication or an antidepressant. Um, so uh, bananas with the potassium help the restless legs. So I would actually put two in a blender. Blueberries for the antioxidant features, you know, a seven superfood. Um, a protein mix, not whey based, uh, whey -based um, but a, a, a good protein mix and I, and I studied them. Um, and I'm not going to give the name of one. I'll certainly can give it out to you. It's, it's, they're, they're, it's kind of expensive. It's like 60 bucks a bag, but I, I found it was terrific for me in terms of protein. Um, and then spinach, lots of spinach. I hate vegetables. I've always hated vegetables. Um, but if you stuff the spinach into a vanilla protein or chocolate protein, uh, banana, blueberry mix, um, you don't taste it a bit. And I would stuff in probably two, three salads worth of baby spinach um, in all of them. And, and that concoction with a shot of cod liver oil, the liquid kind, not a pill or a capsule, but actually liquid out of the bottle that I kept in the refrigerator to mitigate the taste. 
um, that was my, my, my drink mix. And sometimes I would just dump the shot of uh, cod liver oil into the, for my omegas and balance there uh, to help my brain soothe and not pulsate as much. Um, the omegas were great for that. Um, and the cod liver oil was a great way to get them. I would sometimes dump it right into the blender. Uh, in terms of foods, I would snack all day. Um, I, would, I would make sure that I kept my blood sugar uh, as close to normal as possible because blood pressure, blood sugar, all these things, your, bo your body's ability to, to, to regulate temperature, it's all out of whack. So um, I will tell you that uh, I tried to uh, eat things that would repair, in my case, um, uh, uh, GABA. Uh, and, and, and some of my serotonin, uh, norepinephrine, and, and dopamine receptors. So raw almonds, not roasted, not salted, raw almonds, um, tasted terrible, but I got used to the taste and I would chump on 10 or 15 of those at a time, um, you know, two, three times a day. Uh, walnuts, raw walnuts, not roasted, not salted. Um, uh, 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 cacai. Um, you know, from dark chocolate, uh, I would either buy the nibs or I would either go to a, you know, a, a, a CVS or Rite Aid or something and, and go to the candy aisle and, or the grocery store and look for something that had heavy, heavy concentrate of, of real cacao in the dark chocolate. Dark chocolate, not milk chocolate. And I would look for 90% cacao or I'd buy the nibs. Um, really funky, the studies on chocolate, cacao. Uh, that particular type and what it does for the central nervous system, what it does for your anxiety and relaxation. So that's the type of stuff that I would snack on. Um, I would try to stay away, and it was really hard for me, of any and all sugars. Sugars would, would just screw with me. They would increase my anxiety, um, and they would uh, make my withdrawal harder, and they would keep me up at night, and I would be tossing and turning, and the restless legs would be terrible. Um, because of it so um, so that's you know that that that's what I would that's what I would do uh, there now after I got about six months out man, maybe nine months out um, I was still having trouble with insomnia uh, and so then I did begin to mix in um, some magnesium now there's about 15 different types of magnesiums maybe I'll do a video on that or, or, or what I like the best there but if you just Google different types of magnesiums, you can see the ones that are best for relaxation and sleep um, and, 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 and purchase accordingly. So um, that's really it. I, I hope that helps there. Uh, you know, the, 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 the shake would be my meal replacement really in the morning. Um, I wasn't eating Fruity Pebbles and Apple Jacks anymore. At lunch, uh, I would go to uh, Chick-fil-A and, and get the grilled chicken, not the breaded and no bread. Carbs were another killer for me after I started eating well. And then at dinner, you know, I would cheat sometimes and maybe have a, a, a sandwich. Um, but, you know, I would try to mix in with my snacks another shake uh, around dinner time. And that would kind of fill me up, um, you know, and when you mix in the fact that I was drinking a dozen bottles of water a day, uh, I could get away with, with just something um, small for dinner. Uh, and that would help me out. So um, there's your drink stuff. There's your uh, 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 snacks, um, my breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, what I took in terms of the amino acid front that didn't work, and then mix it in the magnesium. So I hope, I hope that answers um, your questions. And then obviously the thing that I think was the most critical non-dietary wise was red hot Epsom salt baths with lavender scented um, uh, uh, salt. Uh, the lavender is a natural uh, uh, relaxant, um, not only of, of the muscles but the, of the aroma um, would really settle me down and I would make it scalding hot. Um, when I was at the worst of my uh, anxiety um, and getting off of medications, especially with antidepressants that hadn't worked for me in a while, they kind of pooped out. Um, I would uh, take up to 15 baths a night, 15 a night, because I would only get 15 to 20 minutes of relief from each one. But over time, these hot Epsom salt baths, you can buy a bag at Walmart, uh, lavender Epsom salt, doesn't have to be brand name. You can get a bag that'll last you a month for four bucks. Um, huge, huge, huge fan of that. 
Uh, last thing I'll mention to you, by the way, too, is, is to kick your central nervous system back in the gear faster. When you take a hot shower in the morning and it feels great, I know this is tough, but right before you get out, make the water ice cold. Now, the first couple of weeks, you're going to be able to make it like 10 seconds and scream and wake up the neighbors. But over time, you'll be able to make it ice cold for like a minute. And you will be stunned that how your brain fog, because we all are familiar with brain fog as we get through recovery, um, will dissipate dramatically um, by mixing in the cold. Uh, I hope that helps. Uh, you know, certainly give me, um, give me your, your, your feedback on that. Um, the other one to, uh, is asking me about um, uh, faith, my, my, my faith and, and, and God and higher power. That one I'll never be able to get in here in a couple of minutes. So let's, let's hey, Quigs, let's, let's knock out on these right now and stop here. Um, and I'll come back and, and I'll knock out some of these other ones um, pretty soon. What else do we've got? Um, CBD oil. What do you think of that? Kratom, that'll be one uh, forever as I go to war with those keyboard warriors. What do you think of grapefruit juice? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Blood pressure, how did it affect your blood pressure withdrawal? Um, can you talk to me about Suboxone? Um, I want my brain back. Uh, I'm weaning off SSRIs. I uh, haven't slept in six nights. Uh, we'll talk about that. And uh, I'm actually in real pain. What can I do for torn meniscus and pain? other than take these medications which are killing me. So we got a bunch more to come. We'll hit all those. Quiggs, you want to step around? Here's our, here's our film director, our producer, Tom Quiggs. Quiggs, uh, St. Joe prep guy like myself. So he's, he's elite gold status here in terms of executive producer. Uh, I know this, is, this pays you top dollar, Quiggs, yep. um, but I know you're here just for the, the purpose of, of uh, helping us all, uh, helping us all together. So thanks for, for, for coming by, and I'm glad you got to see the crew. Um, appreciate it, everybody. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.